Thank you everyone. Welcome. Please rise as you are able. Today we're going to start with, I will call upon the Lord. Shall I be safe from my enemies? 
when people are going from their town or their village to the church, that's a song that they sing as they get. Is everything okay? okay. okay. Um, as they're getting close to the church, they're singing that song as they all gather together and everything. So I, I like that song. Welcome, and let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this wonderful Sunday morning, this time of coming together a time of leaving out outside all those things that weigh us down, that burden us. And let us take a deep breath and just be fully attentive to this time, this place. Help us, God, to set aside our burdens and just to open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive your word, be it through our singing, our prayers, the word spoken, the community, the friends. May your Holy Spirit today, O oh God, just guide us and direct our steps. And I pray, O oh God, that you will be with us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It's a joy to welcome everybody to Metropolitan Community Church of Albuquerque. We have a lot of people sick. So John's sick. Um, uh, Scott's sick. Who else is sick? Uh, just lo lo Ray, Ray Barreras is in the hospital. So uh, a lot of people are sick. So just pray for the sick. And... Uh, 
one of those things. Okay. Everyone, please remember to sign in on the attendance registers located in the seat pockets in front of you, uh, if you haven't already done that. And if you're new or, or perhaps this is your first, second, or third time and you've never uh, gotten a gift, uh, please fill out a welcome card. And uh, if you bring that to me following worship, we have a gift for you just to welcome you uh, to this faith community and to let you know you this is a good place, it's a right place, and uh, we hope you'll stay with us and come back next Sunday. And I think it's hard looking for a church. Um, I hear that all the time from people. I'm looking for a church. and Because um, I went to, I told you all, did I preach on this last Sunday? Easter, Gabby and I went to an event at one of the bars, and uh, so I was, I was going to speak during an intermission. I wasn't performing or anything. And uh, they... Um, I asked how many of you have been wounded by the church in some way, and about, I think about 80, 90% raised their hands, so there's a lot of work to be done. A uh, couple of quick announcements, um, a shout out to our people on Facebook, or if you're watching us um, on YouTube or our website, it's a joy to have you with us today. A uh, couple of events coming up here, um, our congregational forum is today following worship. You can go eat, and then we'll have the meeting, but don't, we're not going to eat like an hour and socialize and, you know, eat and then come do this. But um, also, if you have a Smith's rewards card, we're going to have a computer here today for you to link your, your rewards card with our uh, nonprofit numbers, and then we'll get 0.5% of all your purchases. It doesn't, it doesn't take away from any of your things but it just it gives us a little bit of money. So it's called passive income, and we're really into that. So they, so they, they tried to mine it, it didn't work, so. Okay. We'll fix it. Okay. Did you have our, did you put it in, we'll talk later. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we're having a grounds work day. Um, Ann and her team have done a spectacular job of doing the, uh, the garden in the back. Uh, so Saturday, May 13th at 10 a.m., and this, all this is in the back of your bulletin. And uh, another event that's coming up on Tuesday evening, and Dr. P.J. Cedillo, who's back in the sound booth now, uh, is going to be talking on Albuquerque's rainbow history. He's actually written a book on it, so uh, if you want to go see that. It's uh, photographic portraits of the LGBTQ community and our allies, uh, and it's by the photographer is his first name, oh, Max Woltman. He's very good. He's done a lot of um, really good photos and things. So if you want to go to that, and uh, we'll, I'll have the flyer posted in the celebration hall for you to see. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, thank you all for being here today. I hope that your Sunday morning um, and your time here today just blesses you and renews your soul. And now Pastor Paul, who's preaching today, it's going to give us a moment. So thresholds, they are doorways. They're when we enter and exit a place. So thresholds are important. It signifies moving from one place into another. And so as we are standing at this threshold moment, as we begin to move into our time of worship, let us take just a moment to make that mental and physical shift from getting here to being here and just center yourself and take a couple of good deep breaths. There's a big difference between seeing and recognizing. And today we're going to hear about a time when the disciples were walking down the road with Jesus, but they didn't recognize who he was. They saw him, but they didn't fully understand him. Then when he broke the bread with them, their eyes were opened. And we can see God in ourselves and each other when we understand that we are taken, blessed, broken, and given. We'll now hear the reading from Luke. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. 
but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, why are you discussing with each other while you walk along? Uh, they stood still looking sad. Then one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, moreover, some women of the, our group astounded us. They were there at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, told us that they had indeed seen a vision, a vision of angels who, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them to the, to the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we were walking and talking on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? This, that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found that 11 of their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of of the bread. <laughs> I search the world. Nothing better than you. There's nothing. 
care setting? A couple of you? Yep, past, in the past. Well, you may know that I work for Presbyterian Hospice, and this past week something unusual happened. After three years, the mask mandate was finally lifted, and we could see each other one again, once again. Now, I've had new co-workers join us since the, since the pandemic, but I never knew what they really looked like. I was surprised by one person in particular because she didn't look at all like what I expected. <laughs> I was like, oh my. <laughs> so in honor of this auspicious occasion, I have a few mask jokes courtesy of the Google on the interwebs. This first one is good. How do you tell the difference between a fully vaccinated person and an unvaccinated person if they aren't wearing a mask? You ask them who won the election. Oh, that was better than that. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right, fine, here's one. In 50 years, we'll be saying, you know, you know, kids, back in my day, for three years, we had to wear a mask everywhere we went. We didn't have all those fancy hazmat suits that you wear today. <laughs> Has COVID forced you to wear glasses and a mask at the same time? You may be entitled to condensation. <laughs> oh, I'll be kind, that's the last one. So this is the second week in the liturgical church season called Eastertide. It's the time between the resurrection and the time when Jesus leaves us on Ascension Sunday. And last week we heard about Jesus appearing to the disciples in the locked room and then again to Thomas, who had his doubts about all this, we have seen the Lord business. And this week we hear about two disciples walking down to the road to the village called Emmaus. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now most likely they were, they were probably heading home after the events of the previous week dejected and disappointed, like leaving a stadium after your favorite team has lost a, a game in a humiliating defeat. But it's also possible that they were running away from Jerusalem, afraid that there's going to be a roundup of his followers and that they might suffer the same fate of Jesus. So, but whatever the reason, they were moving away 
where all the action was, to a place into the unknown, into an unknown and uncertain future. Their hopes and dreams for the Messiah, for the, for the redemption of Israel, had been killed along with him. So as they're walking, Jesus comes alongside them and joins into their conversation, only they don't recognize him. And we don't really know why this is the case. Luke doesn't tell us. Is Jesus hiding himself? Did his appearance change? Are the eyes of the disciples blinded for some reason? Well, I don't have a plausible explanation either. I can really relate to the experience. There have been many times in life when I couldn't see or sense God's presence with me as I was running, blinded by my own fear or grief or loss or disappointment or whatever it was. It was only after I came through the other side of whatever hell I was in at the time that I could look back and see the evidence of God's presence with me at the time. It seems that spiritual hindsight is always 2020. And I think this happens to us way more than we think. And it's not just during those trying and terrible times that we lose sight of God and don't recognize his presence. We lose sight of the risen Christ living inside of us and also inside of each other. We forget about this Emmanuel, God with us. And with us, when that happens, it becomes easy to do harm. We can demonize the other and divide ourselves into, into camps. They're the bad person, they're the reason we have all of these problems. It's us versus them. And we see this all over the place today. And we can also do harm to ourselves when we fail to see the risen Christ in us. We start listening to that old, I'm not good enough, eight track tape playing in our heads. And I know you are all old enough to know what that means. <laughs> so back to the story. As they walk along, Jesus opens their minds by giving them a new way of understanding the scriptures. The scriptures that were such an ident identifying important part of who they were. We remember all of this is taking place within the Jewish realm. And the Jews were known as the people of the book, the people of the word. They were Jews because they followed the law of God and the prophets as it was written down in their sacred scrolls. It had first been passed down from person to person, and then it was written down. And then, as it was passed down from scroll to scroll, rabbis would add in their interpretation. And the interpretations became just as important as the laws and the rules. So Jesus is undoing generations of tradition, generations of understanding God, in a particular way, and he is giving them a new way of looking at God and their relationship to God. And so they get to their destination, and they convince Jesus to stay. It's getting dark, and it's time for dinner. And Luke says, so he went in to stay with them, and when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. This is the very same thing that Jesus did probably a week before or just before this when he gathered with his disciples in that upper room and he shared that last supper. And it is in this action of breaking the bread that their eyes open. So Henri Nouwen was a Catholic priest and a prolific writer and one of my very favorite authors. And he wrote many books, but one in particular it's very short. It's called Life of the Beloved, and I recommend it to everyone. He takes these actions of Jesus that just happened, and he applies them to our lives, to us. He says that we are the bread that Jesus took. So Jesus takes that bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it. And so those things are done with and to us. We're taken. That's the first thing, taken. At some point in our life, we become aware of a need for something, something outside of ourselves, something more, something bigger. You can call it whatever you want to call it. We start out on a spiritual journey at some point. Maybe that journey includes Jesus and church and religion, or maybe not. But something gets a hold of us. 
Something takes us, grabs us, gets our attention, gets our interest. And we are taken from a place of uselessness to a place of usefulness. Bread sitting on a table doesn't do anybody any good. It's just sitting there. It's not giving any nourishment to, to anyone. It needs to be taken from there in order for all the rest of the stuff to happen. When were you taken? When did you first realize that there's God? When did you first decide to start following Jesus? When did you first realize that God loves you just the way you are? When were you taken in your life? Next, we are blessed. We are given gifts. What does blessed mean? It means that we're set apart. When you bless something, you make it different from everything else. This is just a table. The top comes off and there's junk underneath it, and you don't want to go down there and look because there's a lot of junk underneath there. <laughs> it's just a table. But we bless this table, and so that makes that table different from every other table that's ever existed because we have set it apart. And that blessing imbues it with gifts, sacred and special meaning. It means that we're divinely favored. What gifts are we given? Well, we're given the spiritual gifts that the Apostle Paul talk, talks about. But I think there's something much more basic about, than that. The gift that we're given is our life. It's given to us as a gift. God gives us life and says, here it is. Not only our life, but the entire life of the entire planet. It's all given and meant to be together. We're given life just the way it is, just the way we are. So God's love or God's blessing is unconditional, given to everyone, not just those who say magic words, not those with power and money and stuff, but to us all. It's your unique being, your existence. The fact that you exist and are sitting here breathing today means you are blessed. God has taken you and blessed you. You may not feel blessed, but you are. You're blessed with the gift of your time on this planet. Now, the next part, we don't like one bit. We have to be broken. Really? Do we have to be? Unfortunately, yes. There needs to be an undoing within us before we can be put to full use. This is simply the cycle of life, that death comes from life and life comes from death. We're born to die, and when we do, or born to new, new life. This breaking is the painful bits of life, the thousands of little deaths that we experience all our years, as well as the big ones. In another book, Nowen talks about being the wounded healer. He says that in order for us to bind the wounds of another person, we have to first be able to bind our own wounds. Before we can heal someone else, we have to experience our own healing, too. So finally, after we have been taken, blessed, broken, we're given. Our life becomes nourishment for others. Think about that for a second. Our life becomes the nourishment, the spiritual nourishment for others. My life, your life, our life, is what feeds and sustains those that come here for that feeding and that sustaining, for the, those that we meet out on the road that need feeding and sustaining. It's our experience, our life, that is what we offer and what we give. This is the new vision that Jesus came to give us. His life his death and his resurrection all point to this truth. That, but we get it so wrong. We've turned all of it that he said into doctrines and dogmas and rules and regulations. And instead of following his example, we follow what we have made his example into. Jesus leads us not into a certain future, but into a wide open unknown future. But it's a future where anything can and will happen. 
including death, lots of them. But our faith tells us that that's not the end, that death is just a beginning. It's just a threshold from one state of being, one place to another. And when we choose to believe all this and to live as if it's true, then it becomes easy for us to walk into tomorrow knowing that God is with us, whether we can see God or not. And at the end of the road, we can allow ourselves to be taken, blessed, broken, and given. And when enough of us do that, the masks will come off and we'll see the risen Christ in ourselves and each other. And then amazing transformations will happen in our world and our lives. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you that you do reveal yourself to us, that you give us the gift of life and you give us the gift of your presence. You've promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And when we can't see you or recognize you, may we walk by faith, trusting that you will reveal yourself to us and give us the grace that we need to be your vessels on this earth. These things we pray in your name. Amen. as we go to God in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you have once again gathered us together and you have given us your word and now we come to you bowing down, acknowledging your power, your mercy, and your grace. And we ask that you would hear the needs that we have that we carry in our hearts. We pray for those among us who are, are sick and in need of healing. There's many. May your hand of mercy touch those lives and bring about healing of mind, body, and soul. For those that are facing treatments or chronic illnesses or terminal illnesses, give them the things that they need for each day the strength and the power to keep going and the faith knowing that you will bring about final healing in your time and in your way. For our world, our country, just may grace move, may your spirit move in us. Lord, we, we watch the TV or read the paper and it just seems like we're going to hell in a handbasket. It just seems like there is so much. But God, there is also so much more that we don't see, so much more love, so much more good that never comes to our attention. Kindnesses, 
that are all over the place. Goodnesses that happen in homes everywhere. There is far more good and love in this world than evil. But we need to trust that that's the case because we can't see it. And so we ask that you help us to open our eyes, our spiritual eyes, and to recognize your presence where we didn't see it before. Give us the things we need for today. Bless those we love. And we ask all of these things in your holy name. Amen. I once took a class on stewardship, and um, I learned that if the church is faithful to that which God has called them to be and do, we will have all the resources that we ever need. However, if the church is faithful to that which God has called them to do, we will always be stretching um, our budget and not having a, we don't have a surplus of money, and that's the way nonprofits are supposed to operate. Um, God has always provided for this church, even in difficult times. Um, and that's through you. Each one of you are a miracle and a gift as you share your gifts with this church, be it through serving in a ministry, um, be it through your offerings, your gifts. Uh, and we appreciate it very much. So thank you all for that. And I know that God is calling us to do great things, um, not big things, but great things, great things that touch people's lives and change them, that heal their wounds uh, where other churches have hurt them and wounded them. Providing a place of refuge for people. We have the under 21 group that meets here on Friday night and they're gonna be taking on one of the garden beds this, uh, this year, so we're excited about that. But the kids really like, this, like being here. They, they love the church um, and they, they like being in this building because they know it's a safe space for them. They know that nobody's going to walk in here that's not going to uh, approve of them or greet them with love and joy. So thank you all for, for providing a place and being the people that God has called us to be. I hope you'll stay for the congregational forum. Um, we have some things to, to kind of talk about and see where are we going. Um, you know, as I've said all through COVID, I don't want to go back to the way things used to be with church. I think God is calling us to do something different and um, part of that happens when we all collectively come together and pray and hear what the spirit is speaking to the church so may you be blessed god bless you
we have fallen short this week. So Heavenly Father, we ask for your forgiveness that we may lead our lives a little differently this week, that we may recognize where we're starting to fall short and that you be with us, Lord, and remind us that we need to follow your path and we need to find forgiveness and give forgiveness. So Heavenly Father, in the night that you were, the night before that you were given up freely for death, you took a piece of bread, and you blessed it, giving thanks for it, you broke it, gave it to each and every one of the disciples and his friends and family that were in that room with him that night. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Same way he took a cup filled with the fruit of the vine, gave thanks for it, and he blessed it. And he said, take this and drink from it, all of you. This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant, which was shed for you. So sins may be forgiven. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless these elements, that they may become the bread of life and the cup of the new and everlasting covenant. Heavenly Father, we ask that you fill us with your blessings and that you remind us that when we take from this cup and we eat from this bread, that you live in us as we live in you. Here at MCC, we practice an open table. You may not need to be a member of this church or any church to receive from this table, to eat from this bread and drink from this cup. We ask that you come with an open heart to receive the gifts of our Lord. So for those of you at home, if you have prepared something, please do so and go ahead and take from this meal. And remember that our Lord lives within you as he lives within us, as we live in him. So will the servers and holders please come forward.
thank you for this meal. Thank you, Ron. We thank you for this meal. May we be filled with your spirit and your love, Heavenly Father. Take us from this church. Help us to lead your path in our everyday walk. We thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. And we thank our Lord Jesus Christ for this meal. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us here at MCCA. We love you all, and we hope to see you next week. Everybody have an amazing week, okay? My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you. chicken and other good things and I pray you'll go back there and be filled in body, mind and spirit and the congregational forum will start, it's 1125 let's say quarter of does that sound reasonable? okay, we'll let you know if we get impatient out here So, uh, but I do hope you'll stay uh, so we can just kind of talk and just be together, I pray you've been blessed today um, I know it seems outside of the walls here the world is in turmoil, and I'm hoping you're praying for the world, and um, I believe that God is better and stronger than any of this that goes on here. So just be, hang in there, walk with Jesus. We'll get through this, and you'll find that when we come to the other side, you know, as I said, uh, I felt like on Easter that some of the grief that I've been carrying since October had lifted, and I still get choked up, and I probably always will, but um, God will see you through it. So hang in there. God bless you. You are loved. You are truly God's beloved people. I believe God has called people like us to be people that go out and transform the world. God bless you. Go in peace. Don't forget to eat. Enjoy.